It's been 10 years since KISS first walked on stage spitting blood, breathing fire, and promoting themselves as the loudest band in the world. With a new album to sell, KISS has been on the road again, but their 100-city tour has met with controversy reminiscent of the 60s. It might be the devil, or it might be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. There were picket lines in Nashville, a record-breaking protest in Little Rock, a standing room only city council meeting in Corpus Christi, and headlines all over the country, Minneapolis, Dubuque, Chattanooga, and Bismarck, North Dakota. The protesters are mainly religious groups who have been trying unsuccessfully to get KISS concerts stopped because, they say, KISS promotes the worship of Satan. This is one of the ways that the enemy is coming in to try to engulf the minds of these teenagers and win them over. We make heroes out of these guys and make them look like they're something great when literally they're destroying this country. Their music and their lyrics is espousing uh, Satan worship and drugs among our kids. And, and you're looking at a preacher in Pine Bluff, Arkansas that's against it, and we're going to stand against it. And not just me, but in Georgia, Alabama, Louisiana, California, uh, the ministry's waking up and realizing that, that we need to stand against this evil. I don't think we'd like those people to like us. They're, they're strange. I mean, they really are weird, you know, but we, we don't get involved in that. We, we're a rock and roll band, and we're certainly not going to make a career of explaining what we do to anybody. What they do, according to many Christian leaders, is use their evil-looking makeup along with lyrics such as, I was raised by the demons and I'm king of the nighttime world to influence their fans to idolize the underworld. I think they're trying to fill their auditoriums and fill their pocketbooks, what I think, and I think they're putting our kids on the block to do it. There are people who really believe in what these guys have to say. That's the scary part. And if we come and actually start playing the game, we're going to lend more importance to these guys than they actually deserve. They are really small-time bozos who are warped, who are, who are going to try to do the same thing that's been done to Elvis, which is burn his records, and to the Beatles. We figure we're in very, very good company. KISS knows they can use the controversy. Their concerts have only been selling at 50 to 75 percent capacity, and their latest album, Creatures of the Night, is the poorest selling album of their career. Poor sales and a disappointing turnout may well be the reason KISS called off the tour midway through and retreated to a studio to cut a new album. Meanwhile, the controversy is also meaty material for a Christian ministry whose mainline membership is dwindling. Both sides claim that they'd like to meet and smooth things out. Well, if I met the members of KISS, I'd like to do that. I mean, I, I, I would, uh, of course, I would tell them that uh, the only hope they have in their life is Jesus Christ and, and that they have to be born again. I'll go listen to their sermons. They, they seem a little afraid to come see us. Have you invited them? Why? <laughs> Did you invite them? Sure, come to the show. Sure. Have a good time. The kids, for the most part, are ignoring all the commotion and have been going to the KISS concerts for the same reason they go to any concert, to hear very loud rock and roll. They're not out here for any Satan worship. It's just rock and roll. That's all it is. They don't have me working the devil, so I don't worry what they do. <laughs> Dixie Watley for Entertainment Tonight.